and blessings, everyone. My name is Leah Penniman. I am the farm manager and co-director at Soulfire Farm. I am also a queen mother in the West African indigenous religion of Vodun since 2002. In the religion of Vodun, we don't see the earth as a natural resource to be exploited and used up. We see the earth as a deity, as a family member. And we human beings are the youngest siblings in creation. We owe honor, respect, and deference to our older siblings, the trees, the rocks, the rivers, the amphibians, mammals, birds, and other life forms who have been here long before humans arrived on the scene. Today we are going to explore some of the ways that we honor the earth and the land in the Vodun tradition and also the Bugis tradition of Indonesia. Hi, my name is Ria Ibrahim. Um, I'm from Soul Fire Farm. I'm as a kitchen manager at Soul Fire Farm. Today I'm so grateful that I can share my tradition from Indonesia. I grew up in Indonesia, South Sulawesi, in a very small village called Lako, uh, named Lakawali. Uh, mostly like we are a Bugis uh, culture, Jaffa and Balinese people, but um, I grew up with uh, Bugis culture in Lakawali. Um, well, so two things that I want to share today. Um, first is asking permission before cutting the tree and the second is um, how to honoring the, the land when harvesting. At Soul Fire Farm we have integrated rituals for honoring the earth into the cycles of our year. From the time we break grounds with the hoe and plant our first seed all the way to the harvest in the fall we are honoring our ancestors, integrating our songs and dance, making offerings to the land and asking permission before we make major changes. We believe that humans are not the owners of creation and that we need to have ecological humility. For example, in 2006, when we first came to this sacred land, we wanted to dig out an overgrown swamp so that we could irrigate, swim, and stock it with fish. So of course we asked permission of the land. And every year for 10 years, we got a no. Eventually, the land said yes, with the conditions that we continue to make prayers and offerings, especially to Nana Buruku, who is the guardian of the forest waters. The tools we use for asking permission include illumination, which is a type of dream work, as well as divination using obi abata. The use of obi abata for divination requires specific training by a member of clergy in the Yoruba religion. We half jokingly say that the abundant flow from our water well, the scarcity of ticks and biting insects on the land, and the lack of poison ivy is because we have these practices of honoring, making offerings, and asking permission so we can be in harmony. Now I want to share about how to thank or honoring the, the land. Um, so in in Lakowali or in Bugis culture, there is a traditional rituals before harvesting. So we do this tradition in full moon uh, or dry season. We go to the field, we invite neighbor, we invite our old family to help us to come to harvest. And then before harvest the grain or corn, we purify the grain first. We kneel down and we pray to God and then asking permission also from the, the, the nature for us to uh, harvest the grain or corn. And then we asking to purify the grain because we will eat the plants, we will eat the corn so it will nourish us, it will give us the best nutrition. After we cut the corn, we, we pound the dry, dry corn and it become like a powder. And then when we pound the corn or the rice, we singing and we dancing in the middle of rice field. Mapa dinang makachapi makelong kelong. Mapa dinang makachapi makelong kelong. Reko purani, reko purani mangala. It means that we dancing, we singing, um, we dancing and singing again, and then we thank to the nature after we harvest. 
In the West African religion of Odun, we believe in a supreme, unknowable, singular God and mother of the universe whose name is Maulisa. There are also aspects of this divinity who live very close to us, called Lua, and they manifest as forces of nature and spirits. Azaka, affectionately called Kuzin, is the Lua of agriculture and the head of the family of earth spirits. Azaka was especially supportive to our people after the Haitian Revolution, when we were finally allowed to own land and have our own farms. Azaka is personified as a hardworking farmer who wears blue pants and shirt, a red neckerchief, and carries a woven sack and a machete. We make offerings to Azaka to fortify the land for a bountiful harvest. In order to connect to this Lua, we go to the land with humility and an open heart. We often make prayers at a big tree, which represents a potomitan, or a center post that connects the realm of the spirits, the earth world, and the ancestors. We touch our forehead to the ground or kiss the ground, and then we blow a conch, which is a symbol of our freedom. Offerings to Azaka include cornmeal, tobacco, and alcohol. We place these offerings on the ground and we sing our song and say the prayers of our heart. Bonsoir, cousin, bonsoir, cousin, oh. Bonsoir, cousin, bonsoir, cousin, oh, à toi. Aïe, aïe, cousin. Aïe, aïe, cousin, oh, ta yon, moi, moi, con sa, moi, d'adje. Bonsoir, cousin, bonsoir, cousin, oh. Bonsoir cousin, bonsoir cousin, no ato. Ay 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 cousin, ay 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 cousin, no tan yo wen wen kon sa wen danger. Our prayers include gratitude for the abundance in our lives, asking for a good harvest, and praying for a good relationship with the land. So before we cut the tree, we go to the forest. And then we find the tree that we want to cut. We stand up in front of the tree and then say our gratitude, like say salam or assalamu alaikum in my culture. So it's like give us the blessing. And then um, we bring the stick like this big and we make the like a stair. The purpose to make the stair for this because we believe that in every trees, every plant, they, there is a spirit live in the tree. And we want to ask their permission before we cut them. We want the spirit to leave the tree. Um, so we put, the, we put the stair leaning on the tree. We bring our offering and we, we put the offering in the ground. And then we say our pray and we say our goal and we close our eyes and we put our hand on the tree and say our pray and what is the purpose why we want to cut the tree. If we have a good dream at night about the tree, then they give us the permission. And if we come back the next day to see the tree, if the stairs still lean on the tree, it means yes. But if you see the, the stairs fall on the ground, you see the stair on the ground, it means no. Do not cut the tree, or you have a bad dream about the tree, do not cut the tree. In Vodun, one of the ways we ask permission of the land, the Lua, and the ancestors before any new undertaking is through dream work or ritual illumination. The first step is to harvest the herbs, never taking more than one third of the plant so that it conti can continue to grow. Mugwort is used for ancestor communication and to bring vivid dreams. Yarrow is used to strengthen our communication with the spirits and the ancestors and to enhance our abilities in divination. Rue is an herb for purification, removing negativity and obstacles. And sage brings wisdom and insight and also purifies. Next, we gather water from a natural source if at all possible, such as a waterfall, river, stream, pond, or aquifer. We add the herbs to the water and crush them vigorously with our hands while singing and saying our prayers of gratitude and asking to bring blessings into our life. The bath is applied 
head to toe, head to toe, head to toe until you use it all up, at least a quart and up to five gallons of the bath. We leave the bath on us, including the bits of herbs and leaves that are stuck onto our skin and hair, and rest for the remainder of the day. Before bed, we drink a tea of mugwort and yarrow. Remember to ask your healthcare provider before you take any herbs, especially if you are pregnant, nursing, or have any pre-existing conditions. If possible, that night we sleep outdoors to bring us closer to the land and enhance our dreams. If it's not possible to sleep outside, we bring a bowl of soil and place it near our bed. We then light a white candle and float it in a bowl of water for fire safety. The candle burns while we sleep as a beacon for the spirits to come and communicate with us. Upon waking, if we had good dreams and easeful sleep, most likely the land agrees with whatever our plans are. If we had troubled sleep, nightmares, insomnia, it means we need to reconsider whatever it is we were hoping to do. There's one message from my mom that about tradition. Tradition is make me uh, make human humble because using tradition, people will honor the land, not just doing whatever they want, but using tradition, it will manage us to asking permission and to honoring the land using the tradition. It is our hope that this video inspires you to look into your own lineage and your own family traditions of honoring the earth. It is not necessary to adopt or appropriate anyone else's culture in order to honor and be connected to the land. If we look back far enough, all of us have pre-colonial ancestral memory of deep connection to the earth and reverence for our human and non-human siblings. We wish you the best on your journey. 